Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, back with another rifle drill. This drill, it is the ready or movement position drill. Not the sexiest name. I know drills should have cool names, like Screaming Firehawk or something. Uh, this drill is something I teach and I also do quite a bit to reinforce coming into the rifle from different positions. Uh, there's generally two categories and they're very broad categories. Uh, one of them likes to try to be specific, but it's not. And the other one is very vague because of life. Ready positions, movement positions. They can be the same thing, but there's also certain techniques that are probably mutually exclusive, or you might have a movement position that you wouldn't consider to be ready position because it's kind of awkward. And here's what I'm talking about. Ready positions. Uh, ready position with a rifle. High ready, low ready, uh, high port maybe, depending on who you talk to. I consider that to be a movement or a safety position. Uh, high ready is a nebulous term. It means something different to other people. I've literally been demoing high ready in a class before and had one of my students be like, oh, that's high threat ready. And I'm like, why did you add a word? Why did you make, so you have a high ready and a high threat ready? Uh, again, that's why I said, that's kind of my point. It's very nebulous. So my high ready is determined by distance and target. For me, high ready is I can see over my optic, I'm not in my optic, and I can see my target from waist to head. From a self-defense perspective, I can now see the area most accessible and most likely to carry a weapon all the way to the head so I can see facial features, gest gestures, body behavior, all that. My low ready is bringing, coming out of the optic and bringing the rifle low enough to see my target from feet to head. So I get a total view of the person. And it's determined by situation or by what I'm attempting to practice. Now I can do, I can get both of those things from going into a high port. A high port to me is more of a movement position. If I have someone at gunpoint, I'm probably not doing it from a high port. And for me, that's the distinction. High ready and low ready are whether there might be a reasonable expectation where force may be needed. So I'm literally holding someone at gunpoint to get some kind of lawful, uh, compliance for them for a self-defense type purpose, be it just everyday guy in the house, self-defense, wherever you might find yourself, or from a law enforcement or military perspective where you give them verbal commands to infect an arrest or detainment. Uh, so the ready positions to me kind of dictate, hey, this is a reasonable expectation of holding someone at gunpoint. Movement positions are, I need to point my gun in a safe direction while I move around. Because life comes at you fast, those movement positions are usually predicated and dictated by the environment, uh, what is safe, what is safer, what is known, what is unknown. So if I am working around other officers, other soldiers, other individuals on the range, down may not be the safest direction to point the gun, even though people believe that the earth is always the safest place to point the firearm. Not necessarily the case if I've got people in the prone, people using cover, high-low, working in a team environment, or, a realistic standpoint, I think about this from my time in law enforcement, responding to like an active shooter type situation or a mass, ma massive casualty event, I may have wounded people on the ground or I may have those little tiny people that grow into big people eventually, kids. Uh, if there's a bunch of kids screaming and running around, I probably don't want to go bowling in there with my rifle at low ready or uh, muzzle down. So sometimes I'm going to point that gun up and I know that that makes some people cringe, but here's the thing. You point the gun in the safest known direction. Would you rather risk muzzling a child or point the gun up where unless that kid has got some serious things going on that you should probably investigate and call people about, uh, if I point the gun up, my chances of muzzling the child are significantly reduced if the kid's right in front of me. Now, somebody might say, well, what if you're in a two-story building? What if? Um, you ever dry fire at a wall in your house and you know your neighbor's house is on the other side of that wall? Yeah, safest known direction. So if I know pointing my gun down would muzzle someone, pointing my gun up might muzzle someone, you have to ask yourself, what should I do? Could you wanna play the puzzle game constantly and just move the gun around and try to find those small angles where for that brief period of time you don't muzzle someone? Or do you take the known safe direction? I'm not saying if you are in a two story building, don't give a shit, you should still point the gun up. What I'm saying is, choose the safest known direction. So if up isn't safe and down isn't safe, pick the one out of the two that is safer and find ways to make it safer than that. 
So I might go muzzle up, but also angle it towards an outside wall. And this is very positional and situational. And of course, I'm sure in the comment section, someone has already come up with a way, an idea, a scenario where up would never be safe. Yeah. Then you'd point it down. Right? Now, if neither direction is safe, what are you doing? There's always a safe direction. You just gotta find it. And that safe direction may only exist for small fractions of a second. You've constantly gotta move the gun based on a rapidly changing environment. And that's what happens when we take real world behavior and, or I'm sorry, we take range behavior and we try to put it into the real world. Sometimes what we do in the range doesn't translate, which is why we should always be working and thinking about things as realistically as possible. And that's one of the things this drill reinforces. To get to the specific drill, you're gonna mount the gun from your movement positions and your ready positions. And you're gonna to shoot to a very precise point of aim and you're gonna run an arbitrary par time. I like to push myself with a par time that's a little bit unrealistic, which forces me to get on the gun as fast as possible and fire my shot. I usually shoot this on an A zone, four by six inches. That's the standard A zone size I use for my UTC targets that I get uh, from Targets Online, if you guys are curious. Both my cardboard silhouettes and my anatomy overlays both come from Targets Online. And their A zone is nice and small, which is why I use them. I like that four by six box versus the larger competition size A zone. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just like to hold myself to a little bit higher standard if I can when it comes to being precise uh, for anatomy's sake. So I'm gonna do my low ready, my high ready, but I'm also gonna do high port or muzzle up and a low port or muzzle down. And just four quick positions and I'm gonna shoot it from multiple distances and I'm gonna try to achieve the same par time at each distance, which is going to be increasingly unrealistic the further back I get, especially if mounting the gun is more than just bringing the optic back up. So if I'm coming from a high ready or a low ready, it's as simple as bringing that cheek weld back up, establishing my reticle or my dot, breaking the shot. If I'm coming from a high port, there's, I have to remount the gun. From a low port or a muzzle down position, it may be a little bit different depending on if I inboarded the rifle or outboarded the rifle or whatever I did with the rifle. Uh, but I like this drill, it's pretty challenging. Another way you can do this is shoot it on a three by five card. And this is a cool drill, especially if you started like three yards and then work your way back to reinforce your holdovers and make you account for those holdovers. So if I set an arbitrary par time of say 1.5 seconds, which is smoking fast, not so much at three yards as it's gonna be from 10 or as it's gonna be from 20 or 25, and it may even be a part-time that you can shoot it at the three, but once you get back to, say, the 25, you're just not gonna be able to make par. But it gives you a more realistic idea of what it would be like if you had to take a shot at that distance from that position and you had to take it fast. Because I'm a self-defense focused instructor, that's kind of where I'm always thinking about things. What would it be like if I had to snap into my gun and make a quick shot from 25 yards? How accurate could I be? Am I pushing myself to shoot from those distances at those times and getting an idea of how well or how poorly I do? And that, that gives me an idea of what I need to work on. Some people, when they go to the range, they work on things they're already good at. Most shooters, if they've been shooting for a number of years and they've taken a few classes and they're honest with themselves, they're probably pretty good at three yards. So maybe when you go down the range, don't shoot from three yards. Or maybe just do five, ten rounds, maybe shoot dot torture or some other drill, and then start working from the distances you're uncomfortable at. I like this drill because it makes you uncomfortable. Uh, another cool way to do this drill, and I do this with a couple different drills, is I'll shoot my four distances, or my four positions, high ready, low ready, muzzle up, muzzle down whatever technique I'm gonna use, uh, from my starting distance of three yards. And I'll get an idea of average, like, oh, I shot that one in like, you know, 0.68, shot the next one in like 0.85, shot the next one in like 1.1, and shot the next one in like 1.6, or whatever the numbers are. And then if you really wanted to, you could crunch the numbers, come up with an average. But I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood of half a second to just over a second. So I'd give myself a little buffer and I'd shoot every distance going back in 1.5 to two seconds to get me an idea of where I'm at. I want that 25 yard par time to be almost unrealistically achievable. So if 1.5 is my standard, I'm trying to shoot that, that four by six box, from 25 yards, I may be able to get it from high ready. Because again, high ready for me is dictated by waist to head. So at 25 yards, I'm not coming down much at all. Low ready is dictated feet to head. So at 25 yards, I'm not coming down much at all, even though, I'm not, even though I am coming down a little bit further than high ready. But muzzle up is gonna remain the same and muzzle down is gonna be the same. So those two positions at least, not only is it a little bit more di difficult comparatively to get back into the gun, there's more things involved and the risk for throwing a shot is a little higher if I'm trying to get it in 1.5. So I may only begin B zone hits from 25 yards 
if I'm running myself on that 1.5 part time, but I don't know that unless I do it. And that gives me an idea of what I, what I need to work on. So now my goal might be meeting that part time from that distance. And the next time I shoot this drill, I may only shoot it from 25 until I can consistently meet that part time. Got to push yourself. Otherwise, why go to the range at all? Another level to this drill, first one I was just doing one round per position, uh, 1.5 second par time. Accuracy was eh, pretty good. It got a little squirrely there towards the back end, but I'm trying to come into that gun and almost an unrealistic par time. Overall, still very happy with the performance because even though I was throwing some bees, they weren't bad bees and anatomically speaking, they were still in pretty good places. If I want to make sure my position is set, I'll add more rounds. I'll bump up the par time. Sometimes a bad grip can let you get away with that first shot, but if you're gonna follow up with the second, third, fourth, so on and so forth, you're gonna learn really, really quickly if you came into that rifle and mounted it properly. So I might bump the par time up in this example to two seconds and fire three rounds per distance, coming from high ready, low ready, muzzle down, and muzzle up to give me a good idea if I'm getting back into the gun, mounting the gun correctly. What you're gonna see is if I don't mount the gun correctly because I'm trying to race that shot timer, I'm going to deviate to the left or to the right more likely than I am to the top or to the bottom because it's not my holdover necessarily that's the problem, although that, that can happen too, is that my grip was good enough for maybe the first round. But after that first round, the recoil unseated the gun in a way that my grip couldn't account for, and I started throwing rounds to the left or to the right. This drill can also be used on a handgun, iron sight, or red dot, whatever. Uh, I like it for rifle in the, the top, the series that we've been doing on rifle drills. This is another rifle drill that I do. Uh, and I find it to be consistently challenging, especially if I try to set myself at what may initially, I think, be an unrealistic part time. I've been shooting this drill long enough that there was a time where I thought two seconds from those ready positions from 25 yards was just ridiculous. And then I started consistently shooting sub two seconds and being able to get A zone hits. And I'm like, maybe not. Now uh, I'm chasing that second. I really am. Uh, I can get it, but I can't get it consistently. And as I like to think, if you can't do something consistently, then you can't do it. Not yet. But if you keep working on it and you break down what you're seeing and you break down what's going right and what's going wrong, you diagnose your target, think about your reticle behavior as you're shooting, get an idea of why the rifle wasn't getting mounted properly, maybe incorporate more mounting the gun into your dry fire, less trigger press, more technique. Uh, next time you go to the range, you may be smoking that two second and then 1.5 and then going for sub one second from those distances if that's something you want to work towards. But this is a low round count drill that's a lot of fun and a lot of frustration, and I like drills that are both. I'm Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.